As a polyglot, I always get this question. Is Chinese, is Japanese, is Turkish, is blah blah language hard to learn? The answer is, there is no hard language. Hard language doesn't exist. Hi guys, it's me Duri. For those who are new here, I'm a polyglot. I can speak Japanese, English, Turkish, and German fluently. And a lot of people get confused when I say polyglot. Polyglot, basically a word which is combined by two words, poly and glot. Poly means multiple and glot means tongue. So people who can talk multiple languages fluently are polyglots. Anyways, today we'll talk about how long does it take for someone else to learn a language or how long will it take for you to become fluent in any sort of language. And as I said in the intro, there is no hard language. There are languages that are harder for you to learn. So language itself is not hard. It's just hard for you to learn. What do I mean by that? If language itself is hard, then these native speakers wouldn't be able to speak their mother languages. But even the dumbest person I'm not talking about the health conditions, can speak their mother language. So the actual thing that makes language hard is making time for it. Actually really prioritizing that language and scheduling a time for it and making a time for it. This is what makes a language hard for it. And also like depends on your mother tongue's language group and your target language group. And also there are a lot of factors makes a language hard for you to learn. Today, we will look at the different data and compare them and understand which languages are hard for you to learn and which languages are easy for you to learn. So let's get started. So firstly, starting the video, let's talk about what's actually a fluency. Like what does fluency mean to us? For me personally, fluency, I think means when somebody can express themselves without really thinking much or translating in their brain. So if somebody has a second or third or fourth, whatever brain, and if their like personality and if their way of thinking or if their voice is changing or if they're switching between the languages sehr sehr lange Zeit gar nicht deutsch gesprochen habe ben youtuber olduğu hiç hissetmiyorum sen kendini youtuber olduğu hissediyor musun yani diyor musun ben youtuberum i think it means that person is fluent in that language so for me for example when i talk in turkish or when i talk in japanese german or english my personality slightly changes between those languages when i talk turkish i become more friendly and when I talk Japanese, I, I think I'm much funnier when I talk in Japanese. And when I talk in English, I'm kind of like more confident. And when I talk in German, I don't know why, but I'm kind of shy. I don't know why. I'm not a shy person at all. But when I talk German, it's kind of changes. So if I would give exact number for fluency, I think it's something around like B2 level, according to CEFR, which stands for common European framework of reference for languages. Okay, so I think it's around B2. And B2 level, according to CEFR, is here. You can read right here. And yes, that is, I think, what fluency means. I personally think that language certificates doesn't necessarily express how fluent or how good you are in that language. Because uh, when I got my DST2 German certificate in my high school, which stands for C1, I guess, a lot of people got this certificate, even though they weren't really fluent in German. But how However, when you read the guidelines of the DST2, you're expected to be very fluent in that language. However, there were a lot of people who weren't fluent at all. There is a certain way to pass an exam and if you know that way, you can pass actually most of the language certificates if they're not like C2 or something, in my opinion. Anyway, I understand why language certificates are important because when you are applying for university or like for a job interview or something, they cannot really test every single person's like language skills or something so they just look at the certificate. I do understand that but for me personally I don't learn a language to get a language certificate. I learn that language because I need to talk or I need to express myself in that language but anyways I mean if, if you want to take language certificates it's totally up to you but if you want to become fluent in that language it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have a certain certificate. So yeah how long does it take to learn a language? Let's talk about that. There are a bunch of guidelines showing how long it takes but today I'm using the FSI guideline, which stands for the Foreign Service Institute as a guide. And what is 
FSI, let me read real quick. FSI is the US government's training center for diplomats, ambassadors and spies. They have been in the language business since 1947 and they have wide range of date on language difficulties for English speakers. And I will put also the other guidelines that I found down in the description below so that you can check them out. So as I said, the FSI data only shows for those who are native English speakers. But since I'm a good girl, I want to include everybody else who is watching this video. So today I'll use the feature of the BUSU study plan programmer, which allows you to see how many days or how many months will it take you to achieve your own goals. So let's get started and I'll show it to you guys. So. You can use Busu as a web version of app version, but today I'll use the web version. So when you open this study plan programmer, firstly, you can choose your main goal for learning English. I picked the English, but you can pick another languages that are in Busu as you can see here. So let's say I want to learn English for develop professionally, or let's say help with my education. And what level you want to achieve. Let's say B2 because as I said, B2 is a level that I think it's enough to say that you're fluent. So let's go with the B2. Let's learn for five times a week. Let's just chill in the weekends and let's set the reminder at 1 p.m. every day so that we won't forget studying. And how long would you like to study? You can of course go like 30 minutes a day, but let's go for 10 minutes. So we'll just comment for 10 minutes. Everybody has 10 minutes to learn a language and let's continue. So it says you will reach your goal by 24th August 2022. And also like before setting the study plan, you can take a test which is showing you where you are currently at, which is your like language level and you can pick a goal for yourself from that point too. When you create your study plan, as you can see, it shows what you should be doing today. And I think it's very good because when we are learning like a language, we can easily feel lost when like services show what I should be doing today. So let's start learning a language. In Busu, they have a bunch of variety of courses that you can select from. They have complete English course, which is for beginner, intermediate and advanced people. And also they have English pronunciation lesson. They have the world in English lesson where you can learn a language from the New York Times. It literally shows you how to say hello and hi and etc. But it's not only for beginners in the exact same course, but it doesn't mean that this is only for beginners. Even though if you're intermediate or advanced, you can still use it. Let me show you an example. So we're going to learn about Queen Street West, a neighborhood in Toronto, Canada. Let's get started. Gentrified. So it pronounces the word for you, and then it gives an example. Gentrified, okay. The neighborhood of Queen Street West has been gentrified in the last few years. And then you pick a vocabulary, and then you continue. And they don't only focus on your vocabulary, you can also train your grammar, you can also train your listening, and you can also like train the general area of learning a language. Busu is an amazing way to learn a language. You can start using it for free, and you can use the premium version for additional features, but you can start using Busu for free. There is a link down in the description below. Don't forget to check it out and thank you Busu for sponsoring this video. So yeah, anyways, if you are a non-native English speaker, you can check Busu's future for calculating how long will it take for you to learn. But let's continue looking at FSI data. This part is only relevant if you are a native English speaker because if you are not native English speaker like me, this part is not probably relevant to you. But let's continue. So FSI calculated the time you need to learn a language by study hours but these organizations only calculate the classroom hours but we don't only learn language in a classroom right we do also study by ourselves and i've read the book fluent forever which is an amazing book if you want to learn any language i would highly recommend you to read that book and today's video was inspired from that book i'll put a link down in the description anyways i got all of these images from that book And when we look at the data right here, the level one, so languages closely related to English, requires 575 to 600 class hours. And as we said, one classroom hour is two study hours. So if you want to learn these languages by your own self, you have to duplicate this number by two, which make up around like 1,200, 1,000-ish 1000 hours to learn you a language. 
by these. So if you are a native English speaker, you need like 575 to 600 class hours to learn African, Catalan, Danish, Dutch, French, Italian, and these other languages. And let's look at the level two, which is languages with significant linguistic or cultural differences. Cultural differences really affect the difficulty of the language itself because language is something involved in culture. It changes with the culture. So we can't ignore the culture itself when we want to learn a language. If you want to become fluent, if you want to become confident in that language, we have to make sure that we know the culture of the language itself. So let's look at the level two. And here you can see the level two. For these languages, you need 1,100 classroom hours, which makes 2,200 self-study hours. So here are the languages you can see, like I see Georgian, Hindi, and Kurdish and then like Persian, Mongolian, Russian and Thai. Oh and Turkish is in this group as well. So the Turkish is a language with significant linguistic and cultural difference when you compare to English. And now we have the data of the level three languages which are exceptionally difficult for native English speakers and these are Arabic, Cantonese, Japanese, Korean, Mandarin, Minnan and Wu Chinese. And these require 2,200 class hours, which makes 4,400 self-study hours. I wasn't really surprised with that because for like Japanese people, it's really hard to learn English. And for native English speakers, it's really hard to learn English. Not the flex, but I can speak both languages. Maybe I'm flexing, <laughs> not trying to offend you, but I am telling that it's possible because like in this level three languages, like you need 2,200 hours to learn Japanese if you're a native speaker. And also if you are a native Japanese speaker, it's super, super hard for you to learn English. I think these data are kind of true because when I like look to my Japanese friends, they always say that it's super, super, super hard for them to learn English. And also it was hard for me to learn. I mean, I, I'm a native Japanese speaker and I'm, I'm kind of fluent in English. English. Not the flex, I just want to tell you that it is possible to learn the language even though it's in a like very hard grip or something like Japanese and Turkish, both of my mother languages. And when you like compare English, like it's pretty hard to learn English for a native Turkish speaker and also for a native Japanese speaker. But even though these languages aren't hard group, I can speak both of the languages. So I just want to tell you that it's not impossible if you study in the right way and if you have the right mentality towards the language, you can learn whatever language you want to learn. It might take a bit of time compared to those like easy languages, but it's not impossible as you can see from me. I will put also the ACTFL and DLI and also the CEFR guide down in the description below so that you can just look through the guidelines and kind of figure out how many hours you need to study those languages. But you know, if you are a non-native English speaker, you can use use BUSU for calculating your estimated time to learn a new language. So I think these data are kind of true, but these data are kind of misleading because when you look into this data, I need like 4,400 hours to learn English as a native Japanese speaker. But you know, I become pretty fluent in English by only watching YouTube videos. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about learning. Then I become fluent in like maybe like 10 months or so. I wasn't really fluent. I could understand English, but I wasn't able to express myself. But but in like 10 months or so by watching YouTube videos, I become like pretty fluent like I am right now. So if these data are misleading, then why, why, why I share this guide? The reason that I shared this guide is that there is no hard language. Firstly, I want you to understand that there are harder languages for you to learn and don't really like, don't really consider these hours when you are trying to learn a language. Like when you look at like Japanese as an English native, native English speaker and say, okay, I need 4,000 
1400 hours to learn a language or something don't just like use the hour data or something just you know I shared this data for you to understand how hard a language for you to learn and how much time it will take approximately for you to learn that language so that you won't feel like you're not improving yourself because learning a language takes a time practice and you have to prioritize it in order to learn it so I just shared this guides to encourage you to learn a language because it takes time but it's hundred percent worth it busu is effective way to learn a language you can use my code if you want to support me you know you do you do <laughs> you, you do you do but anyways i hope you guys find this video helpful and yeah let me see my next video bye bye